first there was me, what is Alex, and my last remaining droogie, what is Dim. After going through all our Gulliver adjustments and such, which relied heavily on bits of munchy wunches of toast and steaky wakes, we had become reassigned as Fernichki Mensheviks. We were cured all right. So now here we are at the old Shlomoko milk bar where they were in need of a bit of the old ultra orange stripping which had become our own speciality. After that, there would be time for sanding. You know, the old back and forth, back and forth. But oh my brothers, we would first have to cover our yazigs and yarbles in the proper safety attire. Right, right, Dim, ready for gloves? Ready for gloves! I'm Ed Feldman. Welcome to Furniture to Go. And that down there, that's Joe Lorario. Remember, some time back, we had some blonde furniture by Haywood Wakefield? Well, they made some furniture that was upholstered, too. And this is one of the most significant designs called Aristocrat. It is Aristocrat, and it was made from the mid-40s through the late 50s. You can see these pictures. There were a variety of fabric choices. Solids, floral patterns, even two-tone looks. Well, you can see what's happened to this Aristocrat set. Somebody put this cold, shiny vinyl all upon it and yellow yet. Well, you know, this might have been original. Nevertheless, we loathe it. And you can't call this type of furniture collectible, maybe classic, you could. You can't call it antique because it's not. No, made in factories. So we have no moral or economic qualms about recovering it. And so we're not diminishing the value, but raising it. Ah, uh, because does anybody out there want to sit on vinyl in the winter? Or the summer. Ooh, such sounds. Like an orchestra of flesh. Well... This would be good for a hot... If you got a spilled a hot dog on this, dropped it. The mustard. The mustard. Wipe it right off. Same so, thing. let's get ready oh, to Oh, we got to strip the fabric off. Oh, let's Boy, get our ripping tools. Something we haven't done in a while. Can I have a pistol? It's all uh, sewed. I know. It's sewn because this was a long piece. It's like when they, they flip back the... Uh, the skull flesh. Yeah, now look, one piece, another fabric piece, and in the middle, a welt. A welt. Or cord. It's wrapped, it's fabric wrapped around a center cord that I'll open up and now show you. Now, we're going to reuse this padding? Uh, yes, it looks good. Because underneath here, there's a lot of hotar. Hotar. Now I'm going to reach behind and start freeing up the inside back. <laughs> and while and the, he does that. Yeah. Gonna take care of this. Hey, you got the you got the knife? Yes. And I have the Swiss. There you go. Look, as I free that up, this will start to pull out. No, the side. And look. Oh. This is this is almost felt. It's it's like felt. It's a real light felt. And that's the flap that they use to attach the uh, the colored fabric to the frame. Oh, and goodness. you have to reach back and free that stuff all up because it's all tacked to the frame. Look, look over here, it's all modular. See, this has been put together. Put this in here, right? Don't do this at home. And then you got screws in here, right. holding this arm to the frame of the sofa. That's another good part about Haywood Wakefield. He can take out about six screws, and this whole arm will be pulled off, which will facilitate stripping and upholstering, because we'll be able to upholster that arm separately. As a matter of fact, Check this out. Look to your left, Charles. I've been waiting to talk about this. This is a green chair, also an aristocrat. You no, know, I'm doing this myself. No, you're not. Yes, I you am. You think you can? I'll have you know in the reform school, I majored number one in my class. And look, the arms match up perfectly, so he can take these off. These arms are really interchangeable. When you come, when you I'm come back... I'm going to do my old Atlantic City job now, This will okay? be denuded, and we'll be working on... Goodbye. Separate, but first, we got to go get fabric. Oh, my God. What kind of vintage fabric can we get? That's the same bike with Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. Spiegel, 1951. Here's where we can find vintage fabric at Pamela Simone's Vintage Textiles. And this is Pamela Simone, and she's with us today to show off her colorful and lovely vintage fabrics. How you doing, Pam? Pretty good. Beautiful good. condition. How did this happen? By accident. I was in the antique business, and I discovered an old warehouse. 
So 5,000 yards later, I'm in the fabric business. Good thing, because we're doing a 50s sofa. Yeah, we cool. have a Haywood Wakefield uh, Aristocraft Great. Uh, sofa from the 50s, and we need some fabric. But you have 30, 40s, and 50s fabric. Right. Let's take us through a quick history lesson. Okay. Definitely. This one is a 1930s geometric pattern. Deco. Very deco. Very shimmery. Very linear. Mm -hmm. Color is very 1930s. A lot of repeated lines and also very luxurious looking, a hallmark of deco design. Shimmery like exactly. that. And this also, is this 40s? This, this is 40s. is 40s, a good example of a 40s tropical. This is an old drapery panel. Wow, mm -hmm. oh, it's very pretty. This Great is what 40s pe colors. People would find a drapery panels in flea markets. Garage sales. I, actually, I found this in a garage sale. Now on to the 50s with the Red Scare yes. and bombs. Oh, and like the <laughs> atomic. atomic. McCarthy would have hated this. Wacky. <laughs> he would have thought this was too Very way atomic. Out. And of really course, nice pinks. Pink and then a green. DeSoto. He discovered very the soda so. water. <laughs> it's very beautiful. However, I think we're going to settle on this. You want to this. tone it down a little? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Still a 50s fabric. Still nice. It's a Still nice 50s, weave. It's a 50s twill. 50s colors. Very nice. But it's going to resonate off another color that we're going to put on the sofa. It's great color. on a Haywood Wakefield. But can't we do the pillars in that? Mm, <laughs> we'll talk. Thank you, Pamela. You're welcome. We will be Thanks. back again. Rest assured. Now short. we got the fabrics. Nobody has fabric like you. Got to get the fabrics. Now we got to put the fabric together with something. Got to get a sewing machine. Let's get out. Let's go. <laughs> Oh. I hope we don't need change because the sign says no change. Quarters, quarters. Why am I carrying this fabric? Because we need to figure out what kind of machine is going to fit, be able to penetrate this fabric because it's thick. And we're here at Arrow Murrow Industrial Sewing Machine Company and we're here to see Bob. Bob. Oh, Bob. Hi, guys. How, how, how are you? Bob Weinstein, thanks for helping us out. Now, do you have a machine that'll go through this? Oh, uh, we have lots of machines here, but I have one behind you in particular to consider this fabric. Let's, Let's go take, take a look. look at it. Right. Like it's right here. Now, all these machines in the shelf, do they fit on table? Also, they're all interchangeable. They're all commercial machines that okay. fit on the table. Do you remember this green from the lab in the ninth grade? Yes, I do. <laughs> Tell us about this machine. Uh, this is a basic straight stitch machine, and uh, it's made for sewing uh, commercial fabrics like your upholstery. And it runs about 10 times the speed of the little home machines. Is that the main difference between a home machine and an industrial one? Uh, plus, it's made out of metal, and it can, it's much heavier duty. Is it self-oiling? This is a self-oiler, yes. Many of us are. So, and what's that part over there? This is your thread stand. That holds big spools of thread. He'd like to thank the Academy. Justice. There is none. It's America. So this will go through even thicker fabric than what we have. Without any problem. How about leather? Do you have uh, machines that go through leather? Yeah, stuff? this machine will go through light leather, and then there's other machines that will do heavier leather. Great. Uh, are, I, th are those milkshake machines in the window? In the window those are yeah. fabric cutter cutting ah, machines. Okay. So you have machines that rip things asunder and then put things back together. That's correct. <laughs> They'll rip service. you asunder. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can borrow this through two shows then because we're no doing this. No problem at all. Great. Thank you very much, Bob. Thanks a lot. Thanks, and Bob. we'll return pleasure. it when okay. we're done. So out of here, and when next you see us, we'll be in the shop with the fabric that we almost forgot, and we'll be putting it together, right, huh? Okay? I guess, okay. Look at this, doesn't it? looks like bad bananas. <laughs> it looks like, look, how long you been here? <laughs> we've stripped the fabric off of the sofa, and we've opened all the seams, so we have a lot of separate and discreet, 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 flaps and pieces of fabric that we're now going to cut, uses our template to cut What's the new fabric. Nails there? Well, this is, some people use a pin cushion. Oh, you use a hand cushion. But I've, I've tried to uh, appeal to the younger generation I'm by doing go a, a series. Don't you have a chair to do? I'm going to go take care of it now. A Don't series worry. of piercings. Now, there are two ways to cut out any fabric by using the old template. One is, guess what, we pin. Now, here's how we pin. I've already pinned a series of straight needles. Sometimes you can use something called a T-pin. That's fine. And uh, the important thing is to go perpendicular across the end of the fabric. You don't want to pin the new fabric to the old fabric this way, but across. I'm just going to take these out. These pins came from any notions counter. <laughs> the these, by the way, these flaps, you might not know where these flaps came from. Here's where they came from. They came from the corners of the front boards. They're the parts that go around the sides of the front board of the sofa right there. I feel just like John Madden when I do that. So back to pinning. So we will simply pin from the outside in by using this to capture the new fabric just like that. Of course, they don't need to be that close together. You know, I think I'm coming dangerously close to people actually thinking 
that I know what the heck I'm doing here. So I can pin this all around. Make sure you pin at each corner of this. How's it going there, Chief? He's a workaday man. Of course, there's another way to do that without the pins. And that's, of course, you get chalk out of your pocket and you just mark it with chalk. It's so easy. Now, with some larger pieces of fabric that you're going to have to be flipping around, you definitely want to use pins. So when you flip it around, you, uh, you keep it together. Now I'm going to start to cut. Always cut generously because you can always trim it up later. But if you cut too short, it's very hard to lengthen the material. So I've got my general shape. Of course, these are flaps that are going to come under and get stapled. So I will just make little ticks in there so later I can cut that off. Now we have to start sewing all these together. Of course, Joe's going to keep working on his project as well. Now what's this? This is how we hope everything will lay on the corner of the decking of the sofa. I'm using this table here. I've cut out this ear. You saw me do that. And this is the front board, which is just a straight piece of material. And this, of course, is the decking. This is decking material. Why don't they continue the regular material up under the seat cushions? It's cheaper to put different kind of material there. And sometimes this is stronger than the material here, and this is the material that you're going to have to staple. That's another story. Under here, you can see I've pinned these various flaps to each other. And the first thing I do is I'm going to stitch this to this, creating an interior seam so it won't be seen. After that, I can stitch the decking to what's left of the flap from the top because that stitch won't be seen because of the seat cushions. So let's, excuse me, Sarge. <laughs> Vanderbilt showed up. I'm gonna what come power? I'm gonna come over to my industrial strength sewing machine. Is that what that is? Yeah, turn this over and let's see if I can do this. We were just gonna have me do this intro and then another pair of hands come underneath. You gotta turn these things on first. Ah, the lovely hum of the sweatshop. That, that's the hum? You know what that sounds like? It sounds like the, uh, the, uh, the transformer for the Lionel trains. I'm going to show you how to thread a sewing machine. No, I'm not. You know what the most amazing part is? I don't have to take the pins out. It's going to somehow stitch over the pins. I don't know why. I've lifted the foot. Got I'm a going good to... shot of the bald spot up here. I'm going to <laughs> shove this up under here, and I'm going to try and stitch a straight yet curved seam. Straight yet curved. Watch the head of that pin there. I can go as slow as I want. Since I've done the bottom, remember that invisible curved stitch? I can do the top. This part is seen, but it's seen under the seat cushions. So you don't mind that you have a visible thread there because you take off the seat cushion cushions and that's for the cleaning person anyway. You know what so, a good segment would be? What? What, somebody doing this who knows how to do it. <laughs> well, we were going to have other hands come in, but I couldn't find anybody who didn't have, like, red fingernails. There we go. And, you know, when I'm very up to the corner and I don't want to push on the treadle and, ma and make it electric, I can actually do it by hand. And yeah, let me give you a hand. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. I told you we should have gotten that manicure. Don't push hard. Don't push hard. And now I'm going to turn it once again. I lift this up, make sure the needle is in here, and start to go all the way down the decking. I have to pull this all the way through. You're almost done, kid. You're almost done. Chrissy, bring me the big knife. Well, it's not a big knife, Chrissy, but thanks anyway. Uh, we did sew it. I sure did, or somebody did in the pretending it's me. And now we're attaching this front board with attendant decking. And if you've ever had attendant decking, you probably fly TWA. It's so painful. Uh, what I've got to do first, since there's a frame board here, and I'm going to be pushing this through there, I'm going to have to make me a little snoop. 
You got your scissors? Right here, there always at Cheers. the ready. At you the ready. stole those from somebody, Shh. didn't you? I push that back until I feel the frame board. And then I pull it up, uh -huh. and we got to cut it right down there. So that'll shove through. Next thing I do is I anchor the front anchor with the one, front. one staple, right like that. Oh, the pneumatic. And now I go around Susie back, and I start pulling or pushing through. Yeah. Hey, I feel somebody else's hand. Oh, it's, it's you. What, what's your, what's your uh, cotton batting there? It's all right. You See? got it? Looks one nice. And if it tears up a little, it's OK. Modular. Modular. Because you're going to put stuff over it anyway, so. Who Start cares? pushing it through, Joe. I can't. I'm going to ruin my nails. Push it through. There we go. There we go. Hey, there's there a piece of fried chicken in here. Look, one staple right in the center here. Come here, you hoes, you. One. Tight. Oh, you got the finger. That's OK. Now I'm going to come back around the front and start to work the front while Joe keeps pushing. Well, this Joe stuff is going keeps. underneath. It's all right. We'll, we'll build that back up. I'll do this all over all the way out to the end. Oh, look what you did. You oh, made me stitch oh, your hands. Oh, help me. I'm, I'm losing my mind. Say it really. <laughs> say it, say it like it's it. supposed Come to Come on, say. bite it. I'm losing my <laughs> mind. <laughs> to the Webbing. web and the springs and the hardtar. So when you sit down, it doesn't all slip around inside, right? That's right, because people jump on this with the kids and the golden and retriever. This will keep it nice and tight. Can you tell I just moved to a fancy white neighborhood? I'm oh. talking about golden retrievers all the time. You don't have any, though, just a fat cat. Yeah, well, the welcome wagon came, said, no Volvo, you got to get a golden retriever, son, or plaid pants. Oh, I'd love to be the riffraff. You are the riffraff. So that's what we do here, and we make big, gross stitches with a big, giant curved needle. Gross <laughs> stitches from the gross clinic. <laughs> Probably the only kind of stitches I can do. It's like the operation. There is gonna, a cat in there. I've got to go finish my chair. You no, know, you've got your chair to do. I made a bed with you. behind. It's got to be done at the same time as I Oh, it'll be in. done. It'll be done. All right, I'm going to stitch all the way to the end, and uh, then we'll be able to do the uh, inside back. And anyway, let's go and see what Joe's doing, because I just don't think he's going to get it done in oh. time. You caught me. Hey, I'm, I'm sure everybody remembers Senor Wences. Huh? Si. Hello. How are you? Anyway, a lot of times woodwork like this gets hit with the Hoover, not the president. Although the J. Edgar. There's a lot of similarities between a vacuum cleaner and J. Edgar. Anyway, oh, ho, 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 ho. anyway, here we go. This is, you want to take the naphtha, okay? And you just take it and you rub, and those marks, which are usually from feet, the leather of the sole, and also from the rubber band around the Hoover or the vacuum cleaner. Clyde Tolson. And you rub like that, and you get a nice, clean leg. And this was made by the uh, Haywood Wakefield Company. This was their champagne finish, champagne. And then you take the lacquer, which is uh, a clear gloss lacquer, and you just Spray it right on there. And now you got a brand new finish again. You could sand that down lightly with about a 320 grit paper and then tack rag it and apply another coat. You can put so much lacquer on that you got a big bun foot if you want. But don't, just do a, one or two coats. That's it. Say good night. Good night. Oh, just practicing my tone for the Philharmonic. We've done the decking. And now we're going to do the inside back. The inside back, as you recall, from our visit to uh, Ms. Simone's is a different color. It's going to be floating in the gray, which is an old Irish ditty. Now I'm going to pull this over the back, but first I have to repad some of the padding that's missing right here. Cotton batting fits in nicely. It adheres, and now I'm going to pull over the top because I've already forced the little tail inside. And as you can see, hi, Joe. <laughs> We've stitched this one, cut and sewn this arm. And of course, the other end. You notice the arms are gone from this sofa. That's because this was modular, and sometimes they would just sell these things as a bench. Other times with just one arm on them. So I'm going to put one staple in the middle of the bottom, one staple in the middle of the top. And then just start working around. 
and I'm just going to work around and around and around until everything is tight and smooth. Hey, genius. Putting in the staples on the inside back. Lovely, in a row. This is your move. Two, three. Move, smooth that over top so you have a nice dome. And then this is the look that you get a nice, smooth top. I'm working with a short tail now. So I can tell when it's all straight. A long tail, more complex. I'll leave my long tail down at the bottom. And isn't that where it's supposed to be? How's it coming with your chair, Joe? I'll continue stapling. Here, I can make all kinds of horrible folds because this is going to be hidden by the arms of the outside. Smooth, like the cheek of Pamela Sue, whatever her name is. I don't even like her. Just finishing up the inside back. I know I'm going down in the corners. That's OK, because I want to get the corners tight. And it doesn't matter if I pleat over here because it's all going to be hidden. The last thing I want to do before I tack this tight is make sure I have open spaces on my fabric for these holes because this is where the screws go in to attach that modular arm. So I'll just sight up a screw hole, like right down there. I'll pull this tight. I'll make a little snoop like that, a little snoop like that, and the wonders to reveal. And then I'll just pull in the rest of my staples like this. Doesn't matter what this looks like, it's all gonna be covered. Write to us, Furniture Guys, P.O. Box 53240, Philadelphia, PA, 19105-3240. Or email us, FernGuy Ed, FernGuyJoe, AOL.com. Hey, Ricky J built a career on that. Uh huh. Well. well, we're done with the inside back and the decking. Next time we'll be doing the outside arms, inside arms, Looks and outside really nice. back. And by the way, how is your chair project coming? Don't worry, you'll be really surprised. Mm -hmm. You'll see it next time when we finish this up. And speaking of next time, I'm Joe Lorario. And I'm Ed Feldman. Be nice to your, to your furniture. And hey, fruit. how's that cut coming on your hand? Well, I can't feel anything. I had all the nerves ending removed in uh -huh. my body. Uh-huh, after the marriage. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>